We've all heard the ballad of Chasey Lane. Maybe Foxtrot Uniform Charlie Kilo? Hooray for boobies? During the 2000s punk pop boom, one band emerged as a distinct voice that encapsulated and challenged the spirit of the era, the Bloodhound Gang. What's up, Insomniacs? It's Jake from Sleepless Records. Let's take a journey into music history and find out what happened to this long-gone but not forgotten band that brought out many classic and hilarious hits while keeping the punk music off the cuff. Bloodhound Gang's peak era spanned from the late 1990s to the mid-2000s. Their music peered onto an animalistic way of portraying people and sex, with the theme of them being monkeys and apes, specifically in their music videos. The band's live performances further solidified their appeal. Combining energetic music, humorous banter, and engaging crowd interaction created an immersive experience that left concertgoers craving more. The Bloodhound Gang's shows were not just about music. They blended entertainment and connection, reinforcing the bond between the band and their fans. You and me, baby, ain't nothing but mammals, so let's do it like they do on the Discovery Channel. The lines become blurred. The band clearly grasped how to rally some with them and others against. The band's music videos often featured explicit content, sexual innuendo, and irreverent humor. While this was a deliberate part of their style, it also led to criticism and debates about the appropriateness of their content. While many bands of that time followed conventional paths, the Bloodhound Gang stood out by expertly merging their punk ethos with offbeat humor, tackling controversial themes head-on, and riding the fine line between satire and commentary. A keen understanding of their audience was at the heart of the Bloodhound Gang's approach. They recognized the allure of shock value and leveraged it in their songs, making them memorable and generating conversations. Their hit songs like Chasey Lane and The Bad Touch openly ventured into territory deemed risque and taboo while simultaneously critiquing the very culture they were contributing to. This blend of rebellion and introspection showcased their ability to play devil's advocate, inviting listeners to think beyond the surface. Some of the band's lyrics contained explicit language and themes deemed offensive or derogatory, particularly towards LGBTQ plus individuals. This content drew criticism for perpetuating harmful stereotypes and attitudes. Some of the band's lyrics contained misogynistic and objectifying language towards women, which raised concerns about their portrayal of gender roles and women's rights. The band's penchant for pushing boundaries sometimes led to accusations of cultural insensitivity and inappropriate behavior, such as using offensive stereotypes in their music and performances. The nail in the coffin was, in 2013, during a concert in Ukraine, a video showed the band's bass player using a Russian flag to wipe his bottom and throwing it into the crowd. This incident was widely condemned by Russian and Ukrainian officials and led to the cancellation of the band's planned appearance at a music festival in Russia. As the incident crossed the boundaries of acceptable behavior on stage, the shock and outrage among concertgoers and the general public were palpable. This action underscored the band's penchant for pushing limits, although it also underscored the potential consequences of their actions. It's important to note that the Bloodhound Gang's controversial image was often intentional and played a role in its branding. Their irreverent and provocative style garnered positive and negative attention and contributed to their notoriety. However, this also meant they faced backlash and criticism from various quarters for their content and actions. Parasocial relationships are one-sided relationships that individuals form with media personalities, such as celebrities, musicians, or characters. These connections are primarily built through exposure to media content, like television shows, movies, music, or social media. In a band like the Bloodhound Gang, parasocial relationships between the band members and their fans can be observed. The Bloodhound Gang's style of addressing cultural phenomena, including fame and sexuality, could have intensified parasocial relationships. Fans might have identified with the band's commentary, seeing them as kindred spirits who understood their thoughts and sentiments. The band's humor and satire also made fans feel like they shared a certain level of understanding or inside jokes with the crew. Like many bands, parasocial relationships with the Bloodhound Gang might have influenced fans' attachment to their music and image. Fans could have felt a personal investment in the band's success and artistic direction, leading to a strong sense of loyalty. While offering emotional connection, 
This dynamic should be approached with a critical awareness of its one-sided nature and potential implications for fans and the band. The Bloodhound Gang's activity declined significantly following its peak popularity in the early 2000s. While they didn't officially announce a breakup, they gradually faded from the mainstream spotlight. The band's lead vocalist, Jimmy Pop, remained relatively quiet about the reasons behind their decreased activity. In interviews, he mentioned that he was working on new music and that the band had yet to officially disband. Following their album, Hooray for Boobies, in 1999, which featured hits like The Bad Touch and The Ballad of Chasey Lane, subsequent releases did not achieve the same level of commercial success. The band's output became less frequent, and individual members explored side projects and personal pursuits. Jimmy Pop engaged in music production and collaborations, while bassist Jared Hasselhoff appeared in reality TV shows. Despite their reduced visibility, the Bloodhound Gang sporadically performed live shows and made festival appearances. Over time, their musical presence became less prominent, leading to speculation about their future endeavors. There was a perfect storm of overtly aggressive masculinity and sexualization of women in the 2000s that seemed to take hold in the culture at the time. TV shows like Mansers and over-sexualized media existed at this time. Sex sells, and in that a day and age, it was rare not to see a pair of boobies on a girl in a bikini, or people just being sexualized in some way. This sexualized mindset seeped into every facet of how a 13-year-old boy would love this type of music. Everything was sexual. Anything remotely phallic would be laughed at. Teens and young adults have been laughing at this type of humor for decades. Unfortunately, analyses of media content show that sexual messages and sexist ideologies are almost universally presented in a positive light. With little discussion of the potential risks of unprotected sex and few portrayals of adverse consequences, In recent years, the Bloodhound Gang's activities have remained sporadic. They have played a few live shows and festivals, indicating that they have remained in the music scene. However, they have yet to regain the same level of prominence they once enjoyed. The Bloodhound Gang's popularity waned as the years passed and cultural sensibilities evolved. While appealing to many, their unique blend of shock, humor, and commentary might have started to feel less relevant or even uncomfortable to others. The shifting landscape of pop culture and the audience's changing expectations could have played a role in their decline. As of 2023, the band had yet to officially disband. However, they maintained some activity that had notably decreased from the early 2000s. With their last album releasing in 2015, over eight years ago, many fans are left wondering if they will ever make a comeback. Ironic, funny and edgy, or just distasteful music? The moral and ethics of this band is up to you to decide. Well, there you have it. Stay tuned for more incredible insights in our upcoming videos. And thank you very much for joining us.